anyone else besides me find this a little weird? All of the stuff that they are telling us to do when it comes to this eclipse. What do they know that we don't know? They're telling us to get groceries. They're telling us to stock up on essentials. They're telling us to have cash on hand just in case. So what exactly do they know that we don't know? That first photo that you've seen was a news station in uh, Arkansas. This one that you're seeing on screen is from a place in Ohio. So what exactly do they know is coming? What are they not telling us? This is some strange stuff indeed. You tell me what you think about all of this. They're even saying possible gas shortages. Very strange stuff is happening. Some strange things are definitely ahead. Be ready and be prepared because you never know what's coming next. And you're going to have an opportunity to view a total solar eclipse on April 8th, 2024. This is going to be the last time a total solar eclipse passes across the mainland U.S. for two decades. Pause. Now just hold that thought real quick, okay? Now you just heard from NASA themselves. This was from their 2023 live stream of the annular eclipse. And they just informed everybody about the upcoming 2024 eclipse, which is what I want to talk about in this video, okay? Okay, I'm calling upon everybody, geocentric flat earth or heliocentric round earth, it doesn't matter, okay? I would like to ask you a favor if you're viewing this before April 8th, 2024. I need everybody's help. That's why I made this video in the first place, okay? I'm asking for everyone's participation. Please like, share, screen record, copy this video, and share it with as many people as you possibly can before the eclipse on April the 8th, 2024. Now, I want to ask everybody if they possibly have viewing capabilities before April the 8th. And I'm going to show you here on screen, you know, these are the paths of totality. So anybody that is within this range of viewing, I'm asking for your participation, please. Okay, to simply just watch and to just pay attention to what direction the celestial body is moving that moves in front of the sun. Now, in a minute here, I'm going to play the full clip from the live stream, and you can totally tell that it's totally bogus what they're saying if you understand any other model of Earth besides the globular heliosexual Santa ball model. Okay, it's ridiculous because they show you a horizontally moving celestial body in their digital simulation, but in the actual real-life footage, the celestial body is moving from top to bottom. This is going to be the last time a total solar eclipse passes across the mainland U.S. for two decades. Now, you can interact with our experts in today's show by sending in questions using the hashtag AskNASA on social media or by dropping them directly into the comment stream wherever you're watching. Now, today we are here for an annular solar eclipse. But did you know there is actually a difference between an annular and total solar eclipse? Now, imagine Imagine the sun is having a spotlight show in the sky. In a total solar eclipse, the moon moves right in front of the sun and covers it up like a big curtain, making everything dark for a little bit. It's similar to what you would see at dusk or dawn. Now, because the moon is completely blocking the light from the sun, we're able to see the sun's corona during a total solar eclipse. Now, in an annular solar eclipse like today, the moon is going to be a bit too far away to completely cover the sun. So like Gina said, when you look up at the sky, you're going to see the sun with a glowing ring around the moon. Because of this, it is often called a ring of fire effect. And as you can see on your screen right now, it is going to be a really, really cool and unusual sight. Now, a word of caution though, because the sun is never completely covered during an annular eclipse, it is important to always wear your eclipse safety glasses anytime you look at the sun. Now, both types of eclipses are amazing shows, just with different perspectives. So today we're gonna be bringing you views of the annular eclipse, and you're gonna have an opportunity to view a total solar eclipse on April 8th, 2024. Probably also believe in the moon landing, huh?
Did you know before even getting to the moon you have to go through the Van Allen Belt? Allen Belt is a zone of energetic charged particles, okay? It's a bunch of radiation, a bunch of heat. How hot, you ask? Glad. Glad you asked. Van Allen Belt is anywhere between 2,000 to 20,000 Kelvin. 2,000 Kelvin is equivalent to over 3,000 degrees. 20,000 Kelvin is equivalent to over 35,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The spaceship they used to go to the moon, the Eagle Lunar Module, was made of aluminum. The Space Shuttle Thermal Protection System only goes to 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The carbon fiber melts at 3,000 degrees. You're telling me that you believe that a spaceship made of aluminum went through the radiation belt that at its least hottest point would melt the spaceship and at its hottest point would just completely obliterate it. They made it to the moon. They radioed back in 1960 through the radiation belt. It was like, hey, we made it. We're here. Come on, guys. Do your own research. That's what we're trying to tell you. Think for yourself. Their math ain't math, and these guys are like the smartos of those smartos. <laughs> Can you believe that there's actually people still out here that doesn't believe the Earth is flat when Disney showed the rocket on the front of every f***ing movie, the rocket over the castle? If you Google a SpaceX rocket taking off, it's exactly the same exact thing. You cannot deny it, and if you do deny it, you're just a complete idiot. Get the f away from me. You're a waste of space, and uh, you're just get out of here <laughs> like you're not worth anything you're so dumb um so the disney rocket going over the castle in front of every movie spacex going and then if that's not enough for you um disney's best friend was warner von braun one of the creators of nasa and on his tombstone he has psalm 9 11 which is about the firmament i don't trust a soul i don't trust nobody Buy some pills, I don't trust my own body You would take a shot and you took her to Crow Palace It only took me one car, got a dome at it Just hit this whole boyfriend, blame me for a show at I'm rockin' right at So, the Earth isn't flat because NASA told you that? Is that what you're telling me? So the Earth isn't flat? Well, somebody explain this to me then Now, as you see, what did it just hit? What did it just hit? Okay, stop playing with me, man. Modern science would like for you to believe that this is a boat that has sailed over the curve and it's now on the other side of the horizon. This is a video I did of a boat being zoomed out back over the horizon and watch it disappear bottom up. Bottom's gone, middle's gone, top, gone. And people are arguing saying that boat did not disappear bottom up when you zoomed out. That person was standing on the beach. And Sky Free on YouTube will give you a representation showing you that something going over the horizon or disappearing bottom up is an optical illusion. This is Sky Free's YouTube page. She's got a pencil sitting here at the end of the hallway and they just open the door and look at that. Just through temperature, it disappeared bottom up. Just like this boat, how it optically disappears bottom up. Let's watch this one one more time in slow motion and you tell me. Looks like bottom up to me. So when modern science argues a globe and says that this is how you know when you watch boats go over the horizon, just know that is an optical illusion. This is not a physical horizon, that's an apparent horizon. And optically, it looks like that boat's bottom is gone. But in all reality, it's not. Again, check out Sky Free on YouTube. It's all about refraction. They'll show you that refraction is actually in favor of the flat earthers, not the globe. So you still think you're living on a globe and there isn't an impenetrable barrier above your head? That's cute, that's cute. But I'm here to tell you, it's time to grow up, Peter Pan. Today I wanna to give you some pretty good evidence that there is a dome above your head 
and I want to talk to you about a little something called Operation Fishbowl that was done by your United States government. You see, in 1962, the United States government was sending up high altitude nuclear tests. Well, I don't really believe in nuclear, but they were sending up powerful missiles. And supposedly, they were testing out what these missiles would do to the atmosphere. But I know what they were really doing. They were testing the strength of the dome above us. And it's funny that they call it Operation Fishbowl. Why would that be? Why would that be? And another name for it? Operation Dominic? Well, do you know what Dominic means? Dominic literally translates to lordly or belonging to God. So they were sending up missiles to test the strength of God's firmament. Now, if you go and research Operation Fishbowl on your own, you can pull up this exact footage that I got that I want to show you compared to a slow motion bullet. So I want you to watch these two. Operation Fishbowl on the left, slow motion bullet on the right. Now this just isn't exploding in the middle of the atmosphere. This is clearly hitting something, just like this bullet is clearly hitting something. And if this isn't enough evidence for you, I'm going to continue to show you that there's a barrier and there's water above. Literally on page one of the Bible, it says, And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Now, what could that mean? Oceans below us. How is this firmament dividing us from waters unless there's waters above? I love providing things that you can go research yourself. This is a SpaceX rocket. You can go find this yourself. And it went up and up and up and up and up. And it finally it zoomed way in, and you can see that it looks like it's scraping against something. How would this happen if it just happens to be, you know, 60 miles up going to space? It literally looks like it's scraping against something and maybe hitting some sort of water barrier. Because I think there's frozen oxygen up there that would potentially have some water vapors. And then there's the dome, and then there's more water above. I've shown this in some other videos, but this is called the Lunar Wave. Again, you can go research this yourself. This is a real thing that occurs. It's been captured dozens and dozens of times. Does that look like anything but water to you? It's not gas, it's not the camera. There's fluid above the dome. And I love to use this video too, because it's a proof of so many things. One, stars aren't what you think. Two. They're in water. Three, they're much closer. And four, there's dogs in there. But that's a story for another video. So again, if you still think you're living on this, instead of this, with an impenetrable dome above your head, time to grow up, Peter Pan. I want you to look at this right here. Really, really look at this and think about this. I will show you two images. This is the first one. This is the U.S. spacecraft that landed on the moon the day that the outages happened nationwide. This is the first angle and video we have. I'll show you the second image. The second image is atop the spacecraft. It is showing the top view of it landing on the, landing on the moon. Who is recording this? How did the camera get set up? before the spacecraft landed. I just, I have questions. So many questions. I'll show you the second image. Just, just give me one second. We are told that this is the view from above the spacecraft landing on the moon. We now have two separate angles of this spacecraft landing on the moon. But again, I ask, who's filming? Who set the camera down on the moon to get the ground angle of the spaceship landing on the moon. I've said it before and I'll say it again. We did not fly to the moon on a spaceship made of tin foil. I know there's a certain age group that will never stop believing in the indoctrination they had as a kid in school that we went to the moon. I get that. It's hard. I understand that. There's some days that I still think that Santa Claus was in my living room because my dad showed me when I was five years old. It seemed real, but you have to decipher things with your eyes now. Go look at the footage of the spacecraft. Why is the technology lost? And why have we never been back? 
Those are simple questions that need answers. I don't care about the other stuff that they've told you. Those two things are weird. You can spit out all the technology you want. It didn't happen. And I don't want to hear we haven't been back because there's no reason to go back or the technology has changed or they don't have enough money because NASA's a scam. They get over $50 million a day. They have the money. There's literally no logical reason they haven't been back. None. You can try, but there isn't. Those lunar lander missions that was going on in the 60s and 70s, yeah, that was an IQ test. And most Americans failed. If you take this picture here, an outdoor set, and the contraption for the crane with the ropes are ready to take off this lunar lander, so take this picture into Google Lens, and you got uh, all of those sources where this picture uh, was used. And you got the blogger, and this is interesting. This is from NASA.gov. And you can clearly see this lunar lander with this contraption for the crane take off from the moon surface. I translate to English, uh, this is in German. The first uh, moon landing, Apollo 11. And now let's click on this. And here we go. You are on the original official NASA.gov history page in German. Deutsch. And this is a journal of the moon exploration from Apollo 11. It's a complete journal from the moon landing. So somehow this picture <laughs> is completely linked with the official NASA.gov page. Inclusive this picture here, as you can see. Hmm. It's very interesting, right? There are many, many interesting pictures here. See here again another point of view with this contraption here and those ropes which goes up and the huge crane is above and then it's, it's ready to take off you can see here it's an astronaut right <laughs> yeah without a helmet of course because it's on earth i think it was spacex here i call it i call this the tupac rocket here it is and this one went up and the top half of the rocket disappeared and if you look at this it goes off there's a bunch of smoke blown out of the ground and then this thing is going up and this little flame is lifting up this, you know, 100 tons of weight, right? Where's the thrust? But this one, when it went up, um, we had, there was a little glitch and all of a sudden you'll see the top half of the rocket will disappear, okay? And after we saw this, I think it was after we saw this one, um, we were looking at some, I think Google Earth pictures of NASA's, uh, you know, launch pad and we, uh, we found these weird spotlights and we zoomed in on them and we were able to get a, uh, it was either a name or a serial number or something and we Googled it and we found out it's from a holographic projection company. A holographic projection company. Earth must be much smaller than we are told. Or the ISS must be thousands of miles in space to be able to capture this amount of curvature. This shot would never be possible at just 200 miles above Earth. Flat Earth map dates back over 1,000 years. This map is credited to being created by a Persian astronomer. His name was Al Biruni and he lived between 973 AD to 1048 AD. It's the official map of the United Nations and also the United States Geological Survey. It used to be present in many places before the creation of NASA and the Antarctic Treaty in 1959. Here you see it with Admiral Byrd. 
This map has been restored by Dmitri from Russia with suggestions of mine, Idia Lenkar. Known by my YouTube channel Flat Earth Banjo, I asked Dmitri to include the Bermuda Triangle and Point Nemo, a place deep in the Pacific where NASA buries rockets. Then Robert Tazi, a professional mapmaker, came along and enhanced the map even more. There are many people now selling this map online, but if you could order it from my online store, I would greatly appreciate it. Visit my online store now, and order one of the items, I humbly thank you.